Sutra. All Dhammas are felt so too are the states of all Buddhas, even to the point that there is not a single Dharma which is subject to production and extinction in the midst of thirstiness. Living beings falsely discriminate. This is the Dharma, this is the world. For one who completely penetrates the nature of Dharmas, there is no Buddha in the world. The Tathagata universally appears before us, calling living beings to believe and be happy. The Buddha's substance cannot be obtained, neither can it be seen. Commentary All Dhammas are thus. Previously, the Bodhisattva said that all Buddhas are inconceivable. Who is able to conceive of the Buddha? Who is able to perceive proper enlightenment? Who is able to manifest the most supreme body? And now he says, all Dhammas are thus. All Dhammas include form, dharmas, mind dharmas, dharmas interactive with the mind, non-interacting dharmas, and unconditioned dharmas. All these dharmas are still and unmoving. The substance of dharmas is thus. Thus means they are quiescent and still. Originally, they are just the way they are. They are neither produced nor destroyed, neither defined nor pure, and neither do they increase nor diminish. All dharmas are thus, a single thirstness, not two. So too are the states of all Buddhas. The states of the Buddhas are also thus. They are also not created. Originally, they are just the way they are. They are thus. This is true even to the point that there is not a single dharma which is subject to production and extinction in the midst of thirstness. If you use your mind to discriminate finely, enough the wide variety of dramas you'll find that not a single drama is established the myriad dramas are all empty there isn't a single drama because all is thus thus also means the original unmovingness of all dramas in the midst of thusness there isn't any production or extinction living beings falsely discriminate dramas are neither produced nor extinguished but living beings use their forms attached the minds to make discriminations. They say that there's production and extinction discriminating. They hold that the Buddha comes into the world and enters Nirvana. They say, this is the Buddha, this is the world. Living beings make many discriminations. For one who completely penetrates the nature of dharmas, there is no Buddha and no world. If you understand the principal substance of the true mark of all dharmas, the real Buddha is thusness, living beings are thusness, and worms are thusness. All are originally unmoving. This is also saying that originally there's nothing, there's no Buddha, no living beings, and no world. Thus speaking ultimately, it is only because of living beings attached to minds that they say they are Buddhas, worlds, and living beings. This is just a case of having nothing to do and creating something to do, as the sixth patriarch put it. The wind is not moving, nor is the flag. Your minds, worthy ones, are moving. It's, not, it's only because people's minds move that discriminations arise, causing them to say, this is Dharma, this is Buddha, these are living beings, and this is the world. The Tathagata universally appears before us. The Buddha universally manifests before all living beings, causing living beings to believe and be happy. He causes all living beings to bring forth a mind of happiness and delight. However, the Buddha's substance cannot be obtained. Originally, the Buddha can't be attained by monks, as the Vara Sutra says. All monks are false and illusory. If one can see that all marks are false and illusory, then one can see the first come one. So the Buddha's body can't be obtained. You can't get attached to the marks of the Buddha, and neither can it be seen. The Buddha's true Dharma body also can't be seen. The Buddha is nowhere present, and yet nowhere not present. All living beings abide with the, within the Dharma body of the Buddha. It's just that they aren't aware of it. Sutra, if you can, while within the world, be far apart from all attachments, and be happy 
and unobstructed in mind, then you enlighten to the Dharma. What appears through spiritual powers is called the Buddha. At all times throughout the three various barriers, he may be sought, but he doesn't exist. If one can know this, then the mind and all dharmas are completely known and perceived, and one can quickly become a Tathagata. Within words and language is revealed, the self-mastery of all Buddhas, proper enlightenment transcends words and language, yet words and language are falsely used to express it. Commentary, if you can, while within the world, be far apart from overtachments and be happy and unobstructed in mind, then you'll enlighten to the drama, if means that this is a hypothetical situation. Basically, people can't do it, but the Bodhisattva says, if just supposing that living beings could do it. Basically, living beings do not understand this drama, but here is the theorized what it would be like if they did understand. So the Bodhisattva proposes this situation. There are two kinds of worlds. The world of sentient beings, this refers to the world of living beings, which is also called the world of proper retribution. The material world, this refers to the world of things and is also known as the world of dependent retribution. Now, the Bodhisattva is supposing that within the worlds of sentient beings, you can be far apart from all attachments. All attachments include the things you like. For instance, greed from wealth creates attachment to wealth. Greed from, from form creates attachment to form. Greed for fame creates attachments to fame. Greed to eat good things creates attachments to food. And for people who are greedy for sleep, there's an attachment towards sleep. This is how greed and the five desires work. For example, if you don't allow someone to get a lot of sleep, that person will get afflicted to the extent that his vicious nature will manifest and he could even be driven to the point of murder just from not having enough sleep. Greed for good things to eat is also an attachment. If you don't give people good things to eat, they become very unhappy. They're greedy for the five kinds of flavors which are bitter, hot, sour, salty and sweet. Everyone has his or her own preference for flavor. Some like things sweet, some like things salty, some sour, hot or bitter. So everyone has his or her own attachments. Then there are people who have an attachment of fame. No matter what happens, they want to save face. They want their names to be well known and they can't break this attachment. There is even a fiercer attachment and this is towards form. Some people are obsessed by beautiful forms to the point that their every thought is related to the pursuit of sex and this kind of attachment is also not easy to break. Then there are those who are greedy for wealth. At all times they want to make it rich. They constantly think of money and consequently are really upside down. When you look into the Chinese character for money, you'll find it is written with a gold radical on the left and two spears on the right side. As the ancients put it, two spears fight for gold and the killing energy mounts high. People bicker and squabble just because of it. Those who can make good use of money can transcend the triple world, but those who can't make good use of it can't be separated from their evil offenses. Whereas those who know how to use money can establish good merit and virtue with it, those who don't know how to use money only plant bad cause with it. So you should be far apart from all these attachments to the point of breaking the, the attachment to yourself. Wanting things only for your own benefit is being selfish, selfishness and self-benefit are attachments to a self. You can also develop an attachment to drama in studying the Buddha drama. For instance, a person can lecture a sutra and so that and so that person develops an attachment towards that sutra, he says. 
I can understand the Buddha drama better than you, better than you. And this is just an attachment to dramas. Originally, there isn't any attachment before studying the Buddha drama. He doesn't produce that kind of attachment. But once he studies the Buddha drama, he produces this kind of attachment. This person becomes conceited and arrogant. He can't see anybody else, and this all comes about because of attachment to dramas. Living beings are like uh, silk worms making their cocoons. They are themselves up and can't attain liberation. There are all kinds of attachments, but if you can be apart from them and be happy and unobstructed in mind, then you'll be able to attain liberation. To be apart from all obstructions is liberation. To be without obstructions is to be happy. At that time, your mind gives rise to great happiness, and you truly become free, not having any attachments, you're just attaining liberation. Then you'll enlighten to the drama. At that time, you understand that dramas are originally complete within our self natures. There's a precious pearl inside each of us, and it can't be sought after outside of the self nature. The treasure is in your own pocket. It's not something you look for someone else. So if you can understand that all dramas are originally within your own self nature, then you'll be able to understand and open enlightenment. What appears through spiritual powers is called the Buddha. The Buddha's great, awesome spiritual power manifests a response of body through transformation. Because he can manifest this, he is said to be the Buddha. This is a transformational body. At all times, throughout the three births, he may be thought, but he doesn't exist. The past, the present, and future are the three births. Past time can't be guarded. Present time can't be guarded, and future time can't be guarded. Why is this? Past time has already come and gone. And just say now is the present time, but the present time doesn't stand stand still. It doesn't stop. You make reference to the future, but the future hasn't yet come. The three kinds of thought of past, present, and future cannot be guarded. The three borders of time can't be guarded. If you go looking for them, you will find they can't be guarded. If one can know this, then the mind and all dramas are completely known and perceived. If you can understand that everything is impermanent, that nothing can be guarded, that nothing is true and untrue, that everything is empty and false, then you realize that your mind, your intention, and your attention to all the various dramas are still. Applications of effort at the gates of knowledge and views. None of them have come to the ultimate state where they are apart from knowledge and views. They are still functions of the gates of knowledge and views of the six rules: the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And it's right there at the six rules where you need to apply your skill. If one can do this, then one can quickly become a tathagata. If you can understand that everything is not true, but is just knowledge and views, then you can very quickly attain the wisdom of the first come one. Within words and language is revealed the self mastery of all Buddhas through the use of language. The self mastery of all Buddhas' spiritual powers is revealed. Proper enlightenment transcends words and language. Ultimate proper enlightenment transcends all words and language. It is a state wherein the path of language and words is cut off. The place of the mind's activities is extinguished. The path of language is cut off. There's nothing. The place of the mind's activities is extinguished. If you try to think about this, you can't. Although the mouth wants to say something, the words aren't there. Although the mind wants to contemplate, the thoughts are gone. There's nothing there. You want to think about it, but you can't, and this is an inconceivable state. Yet words and language are falsely used to express it. The Buddha transcends all words and language. Words and language are cut off, and the place of the mind's activities is extinguished. However, we still use language to explain the state of the Buddha. 
Originally was a language I falsely used to spin this date, and no amount of speaking about it can clarify it. Still, was a language I spoken, otherwise people wouldn't know of the true and actual state of the Buddha. And although we speak about it, there's no end to this explanation, for it can't be exhausted with the words. Sutra at that time, Dhamma Benna Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power, universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. Commentary at that time, Constellation Benna Bodhisattva finished speaking verses, and so Dhamma Benna Bodhisattva arose from his seat, uncovered his right shoulder, placed his right knee on the ground, put his palms together respectfully, and spoke to the Buddha. He received the Buddha's Shakyamuni Buddha's spiritual power, that is the great awesome spiritual power of Varuchana Buddha, and also of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions and Three Buddhas of Time. Universally contemplated the Ten Directions and spoke these verses. He contemplated the causes and conditions of living beings throughout the Ten Directions and Three Buddhas of Time, and reiterated his meaning in verses. When the time comes to circumambulate, take a look to make sure that people are walking in accordance with Dharma. What is meant by according with Dharma? When people are circumambulating, some pull their palms together and some have them separated. When we walk, we should make sure that everyone has their palms in a cupped position just above their waist. And then when the bell is rung, and we switch the chanting pattern. Someone can watch to make sure that everyone has their palms together. Maybe someone can be Dharma protector and make sure that people act in accord with the Dharma. Perhaps there are new people who don't understand and you need to tell them. So when we start circumambulating, someone should stand beside the stairs or beside the window and make sure that everyone has their palms together. Then this will make everything appear solid and awesome. Everyone should be careful and pay attention to this. When new people come here and don't know where to bow to the Buddha, you should tell them where to bow. If they don't know where to sit, you should tell them where to sit. This should be done by the Yubasakas and Yubasikas. It shouldn't be done by left-home people. Yubasakas and Yubasikas are the Dharma protectors and should be responsible for these matters. They should protect and uphold the way place.